lovely. Oh, I didn't hear you come in. This is charming. Absolutely charming. And the conductor told me all about you. I assume you're Mrs. Bradley. Yes, and you're... Uh... Well, I hope you received our letter reserving two rooms. You're Mr. Dobble. No, no, I am David Benton. This is Mr. Dobble. <laughs> now, about those rooms. Uh, Mr. Dobble asked in his letter if he could have a room with a southern exposure. And uh, you can give me an adjoint... What? All right, all, all right, Dobble. You don't have to create a scene. <sighs> now he wants a room with a northern exposure. Well, the, uh... <clears throat> Please, Mrs. Bradley. Look, Dobble, why be so fussy? A room is a room. Now, Mrs. Bradley... Will you stop tugging at my sleeve? We'll discuss this later. I'm sorry. It's been an exhausting trip. Well, if, if, if you're not used to the cannonball, it can jiggle your brain so little loose. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll register, if you don't mind. Oh, yes, of course. Here we are. David Benton, Weehawken, New Jersey. How about Mr. Dobble? Dobble, will you stand still? <laughs> he sprained his wrist. Does this hurt? Oh. Well, I'll sign for him. <laughs> Sorry about your wrist. <laughs> Donald D. Dobble. Oh, he's from Weehawken, too? Oh, yes, yes. We've been in business together for years. Uh, oh. He's your silent partner. <laughs> Beg your pardon? You're a musician? Oh, oh, this? Oh, no, no, no. Mr. Dobble is the musician. After the tensions of the day, the saxophone kind of relaxes him. He doesn't look like a musician. He doesn't. Well, that's funny. Most people think he does. Well, anyway, can we have our keys? Oh, yes. <laughs> Mr. Benton, you're in number seven, and Mr. Dobble is number five. Mm. Here, I'll take it. <laughs> now, Dobble, Dobble, leave the luggage alone. You'll strain your wrist again. Give it a chance to heal. <laughs> you to be extra quiet while Mr. Benton is here. He needs all the rest he can get. <laughs> and if Mr. Benton talks to his friend, Mr. Dobble, and you don't hear Mr. Dobble or see him, you act like you do. Understand? Hey, look what that new guest Mr. Benton just gave me. Uncle Joe, I want you to give that right back. Why should I? Well, it's, it's a little hard to explain. Now, Mr. Benton's a very nice man, but... I'll say he is. You know what this buck's for? Just bringing an extra towel to his friend, Mr. Dobble. You met Mr. Dobble? No, just Mr. Benton. Dobble was in the bathtub. Are you sure? Well, somebody's got the water running. Probably Mr. Benton. Well, Benton had already had his bath. See, I'd better stand by in case they need more service. <laughs> Dobble might like a little hot cocoa. I was going to get yours later. Well, that's very thoughtful of you, Mrs. Bradley. I, uh, I'm afraid Mr. Dobble is taking a nap. Oh? Uh? However, I could certainly use some. Where are you doing that ladder, Key? What ladder? <laughs> the one you're fussing with. Oh, this old thing. <laughs> well, I was going to, well, 
Wash the windows on this side of the hotel. What's the matter with you, Kate? The girls washed them windows this morning. Well, I know that. But you uh, remember the old saying, uh, twice clean window is a nice clean window. <laughs> what? That don't make sense. No, Joe, don't argue with old sayings. <laughs> Tommy, have I got this under number five? Five? That's Mr. Doble's window. Well, hasn't he got a right to clean windows? Well, sure he has. Well, and don't talk so loud. He's taking a nap. Yeah, but you can run along now, Uncle Joe. I won't need you. Won't you be leaving the bucket? <laughs> oh, yeah, I guess it will. <laughs> I've never felt better. Did Mr. Dobble and his friend get here? Oh, yes, they're both here, I think. What? What's Mr. Dobble like? Uh, Mr. Benton is very charming. He's kind of tall and handsome and dresses nicely, and I'd say he's, uh, ooh, about 35. What's Mr. Dobble look like? Well, he's a little hard to describe. Is he good looking like Mr. Benton? Oh, no. I mean, yes. Well, Yes and no. Is he tall or short? Well, he's a little of both. <laughs> he can't be both. Which is he? Now, girls, look, you, 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 you both had a hard, strenuous day at school and, and a long trip home under the cannonball, and you're tired. So why don't you rush up to your rooms and lie down and take a nice, good, long rest? But we're not... Now, now, Mother knows on your way. <laughs> Forget what I said about Mr. Benton and keep an eye on me. <laughs> Mr. Dobble. Mr. Dobble, I thought you'd like to see the paper. of Shakespeare. <laughs> Ralph Shakespeare? <laughs> well, I know something about him. He reads and he smokes. <laughs> and he's married. Well, it's normal. I just thought that maybe Mr. Dobble would like to read the paper. Well, why don't you put it in his room? He can read it when he gets back from his walk. Which way'd he go? Oh, I don't know. I didn't see him. He told you he was going for a walk and you didn't see him? <laughs> That's silly. He didn't tell me. Bobby Joe did. Well, why didn't you say so? <laughs> Which way did he go? Who? You know, Mr. Dobble. Oh, I don't know. I didn't see him leave. Now, don't you start that. <laughs> start what? Betty Jo said you told her Mr. Dobble went for a walk. Well, that's what Uncle Joe said. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you just calm down and listen, Dobble borrowed my fishing pole. Then you saw him. Nope. I gave it to Benton to give to Dobble. Why? Questions, questions, questions. Why doesn't somebody give me an answer? <laughs> anyway, he's got to show up for dinner tonight. <laughs> the door and 
doors again, Mom. Mr. Benton said they'll be down in a minute. Gee, you were sure right about Mr. Benton. Yes, he sure is nice. Oh, uh, what do you think of Mr. Dobble? Oh, we haven't met him yet. Well, I think you'll find him kind of interesting. <laughs> Honestly, Dobble, you're impossible. Now, get this. I'm not going to put up with this nonsense much longer. Uncle Joe, sit down. Why do you have to take everything as a personal attack? All I said was that some fathead in the home office lost the account. You, wait a minute, Dobble. Come back here. Where are you going? Uh, good evening, folks. Uh, good Hello. evening, good Mr. Evening. Benton. Uh, that, that's your place. Uh, and um, that's Mr. Dobble's. Uh, I'll have to apologize for my partner. He won't be joining us tonight. Oh? Oh, that chicken looks good. You know, it's a shame Mr. Dobble's going to miss dinner. Maybe if I went after him... No, 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 Mrs. Bradley, let him sulk. Let him sulk. If he wants to be silly enough to pass up a meal like this, well, I'll just eat his share. <laughs> Mr. Dobble. Did you hear that? <laughs> you didn't, huh? I must be losing my mind. Toot your head off. I don't hear a darn thing. <laughs> Sleep well last night, Mom? I slept just fine. <laughs> now, you, you, you better eat your breakfast or you're going to be late for school. Morning, Mom. Morning. Didn't you sleep well last night? Billy Joe, I slept just fine. I'm not Billy Joe. I know that. She's in the dining room. That was Bobby Joe. Look, you take these eggs in there with whatever her name is and eat your whatchamacallit. Jeez. <laughs> Kate. Gee, Kate, you look awful. Thanks. A woman could go all day on a compliment like that. Well, you do look awful, Kate. Just look at those circles on your eyes. You look like you're wearing stove lids. You fix your own breakfast. <laughs> What's wrong? 
wrong with Mom? I don't know. I never saw her so upset. She must be overworked. We better come right home as soon as school's out. <sighs> Uncle Joe, are you going to eat all day? Well, it's a good idea, but... <laughs> You've had enough. Ah, good morning, good morning. Good, good, good morning, Mr. Benton. Hi, Ben. Where's your partner? You know, I'm afraid Mr. Dobble overslept. Oh, listen, I hope his saxophone playing didn't disturb any of you last night. Oh, no, I, I enjoyed it. You mean Mr. Dobble did play the saxophone? Well, he's better than Liberace. <laughs> Mr. Benton, you, you, you sit down and I'll fix your breakfast, and Uncle Joe, I'll fill up your plate so you can keep Mr. Benton company. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Dobble, please, sir. <laughs> Can't stay cooped up in your room all day, Dobble. After all, why did we come way out here in the country? Oh, forget about those letters. You can write them later. Come on. A walk will do you some good. Oh. Uh, you're, um, going for a walk? Both of you? Well, I hope so. It's like pulling teeth to get Dobble out of his room. Uh... How did Mr. Dobble like his lunch? I mean, how did you like your lunch, Mr. Dobble? Yeah. yeah. Just like your mother's, huh? <laughs> That's a real compliment, believe me. Thank you, Mr. Dobble. All right, come on, Dobble. Let's get a lung full of that fresh country air. I'll tell you what. First, we'll go down to the water tank. Oh, no, you don't. You're not going to pull that again. Get up out of that chair. You know, you should have stayed in Weehawken. All right, do what you want to do, but you're not going to ruin my fun Sit in that chair all day. <laughs> Mr. Dobble, you really should have... sit there, it's perfectly all right. Gee, I hope Mom... As long as you're going to sit there, uh, then to read. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Uh, uh, a book or a magazine? Or um, how about a nice tall glass of lemonade? Oh, poor Mom. It's gotten worse. <laughs> Hi. Oh, girls, you're home early. Kate, I want to ask you something. Not right now, Uncle Joe. I got to get Mr. Dobble a glass of lemonade. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, uh, Mom, there isn't anybody there. Oh, he's there, all right. <laughs> that upset the girls, huh? All that fuss. You'd think nobody had ever seen an invisible man before. <laughs> you saw an invisible man, huh, Kate? Yes. Is there anything wrong with that? No, no, no. Invisible men are as thick as invisible flies. <laughs> well, tell me more about this invisible Mr. Double. Double. Donald D. Double. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's the one who wrote you the letter, huh? I told you that, Sam. Yeah, well, uh, let me see if I got this all straight. Now, this Mr. Double never eats with you, and Benton is always arguing with him. And yet nobody's ever heard Dobble talk. In fact, uh, you're the only one that's ever been in the room when he was there. That's right. What are you doing, Sam? I'm looking for that magazine. There's an article in it that just fits what you told me. An article on invisible men? No, no, no. Well, I must have given it away to the Boy Scout paper drive. No, it was an article by this psychologist, and he was explaining how a lot of strange things happen. Oh? Yeah. What you told me comes under the head of sympathetic hallucination. It's as simple as that. Well, it may be simple to you, Sam, but it isn't to me. You mean that I've got hallucinations? Yeah. Uh, no, no, this fellow Benton has hallucinations. You see, he thinks there's a Mr. Dobble, and through the power of suggestion, he's got you thinking there's a Mr. Dobble. Oh, you mean that Mr. Dobble is a figment of Mr. Benton's imagination, and his figment got tangled up with my figment? That's right. Thanks, Sam. I think. <laughs> Mr. Benton's figment, Mr. Dobble. <laughs> Mr. Dobble sure wears expensive shirts. After all, he does come from Weehawken. 
If I knew a man with shirts like these, I could sew buttons on them all day long. <laughs> Where's Mr. Benton? Mom, we just finished sewing a button on Mr. Dobble's shirt. <laughs> that isn't a shirt. That's another figment. <laughs> it's a shirt. Feel it. Oh, my lands. That sympathetic hallucination is contagious. Now you girls have got it. <laughs> Mr. Benton's got to go. Mr. Benton? Mr. Benton! Ah, Mrs. Bradley, you're back. Did you pick up any mail for me? Uh, Mr. Benton, I'm going to have to have a talk with you. I'm going to need your room, so you and Mr. Dobble are going to have to check out. But, Mrs. Bradley, we reserved the rooms for three weeks. Well, I'm sorry, but uh, a convention completely slipped my mind. Convention? Well, you, you girls remember that? The, the, the State Department's taken over the entire hotel. There's a delegation of little invisible green men from Mars, and they're going to check in here in ten minutes. Mom. Now, there's very little time, so you better pack, both of you. Well, Mrs. Bradley, this, uh, this leaves Mr. Dobble and me in a rather embarrassing position. If we leave now, we won't be able to pay our bill. Uh, I was expecting a sizable check. Well, just, just, just forget it. The room and board's on the house. It's been nice having you, and goodbye. <laughs> well, number five's all back to normal again. If there wasn't a Mr. Dobble, who slept in this bed? Oh, well, you see, that was all part of poor Mr. Benton's hallucinations. Sam read this article, and... Mom, somebody's downstairs. Now, who could that be? Well, don't you remember? It's those invisible little green men from Mars. <laughs> Mrs. Bradley, do you recognize this man? Well, certainly. It's Mr. Benton from Weehawken. Sure is. Well, he's not from Weehawken, and his name isn't Benton. The Hotel Association knows him as Skip Tracy. We've been after him for years. What for? Defrauding innkeepers. Well, he didn't get a chance to do any defrauding around here. Well, you're lucky. Skip has a very unusual gimmick. He can make you think he's traveling around with an invisible friend. He does it all with the power of suggestion and sound effects. Uh -huh. Yes, he keeps it up until the hotel manager thinks he's flipping his lid, and he throws Skip out. That way, Skip never has to pay for his room and board. <laughs> Imagine for falling for a thing like that. <laughs> Imagine. Well, I better tip off the manager of the Pixley Hotel. Bye, Mr. Robinson. Give my best to Mr. Dobble. <laughs> well. Certainly good to know that there's a logical explanation for all this. <laughs> yeah. Mr. Benton sure had us all believing there really was a Mr. Dobble. Yeah. Junction. This has been a Filmways presentation.